So the fun part, you, you've just collected a, a number of patches. You've uh, went out and traded for them, and they probably are in a bag kind of like this, and you're wondering how you're going to go about the, displaying the material. You know, that's a good question. Um, for, for me, starting out, I started out just like everyone else where I had a, a bag full and a box full, and they were all over on the, the floor of my uh, bedroom when I was a kid. <laughs> And uh, I was trying to figure out how I was going to uh, display and keep the, the scouting history alive to try to show to other folks. So I went through a number of uh, different uh, levels uh, as I progressed with my scout collection to where it is today. Again, my intent is to have a traveling museum that I can take to different scout events and to be able to, to show whether it be a court of honor, a uh, traitory, a fellowship, a... Uh, campery or whether it's a another council event uh, the goal is to be able to pack up my stuff and be able to transport and deliver it to a location in a reasonable amount of time without it being too heavy uh, to be able to move it around set it up and display it for that event take it down and take it home so uh, that's ultimately the the goal and how my mine uh, collection has expanded and my uh, museum has evolved but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and start off with the basics of uh, collecting and how I kind of went uh, and moved from, from one thing to another. So just like uh, you can go um, to your local store and pick up three ring binders and just pick up the, the regular page protectors, uh, these are great um, being able to uh, display and put your patches in there. What I found was rather than using uh, tape on the back because, because certain tape and even certain page protectors have film on them, so you, so you may want to consider it uh, in looking at a uh, specialty supply store, uh, Hobby Lobby I tend to, to go to and try to pick up my stuff from there. They have certain ones that don't necessarily have the oils on them that may break down the patches or uh, putting uh, duct tape or another adhesive on the back. Um, you can try to refrain from doing. But what I wound up doing was I'd put the patches in here and then I'd, I'd take staples and put the staples around the, uh, the corners. So that's uh, my initial uh, method of, of trying to do it. It was pretty inexpensive and it worked pretty well. And obviously it was stored in, in three ring binders that the patches generally didn't fall out of. From there, I, I started to evolve and I moved up to keeping the, the binders and just evolving to some of these uh, different page protectors. Uh, you can usually get it in uh, collecting stores. I think I got most of mine off of uh, eBay or a couple of the different uh, scout websites um, to try to do it. Uh, they have different sizes, so you can uh, use them to put in different CSPs or lodge flaps or oversized flaps. Again, with the binder, you see some, some patches may fall out, uh, but for the most part, um, they, they're stored pretty, pretty well and, and pretty safe. And again, they have the Boy Scouts puts out different um, collecting binders from time to time. You can usually get these off uh, eBay if nowhere else and it's just a, a different binder that holds a bunch of the different pages for you to be able to organize your collection and be able to work with. Now moving on, on to the, the next um, display cases, uh, I'd like to um, uh, direct your attention over uh, to my right, probably your left. And what I started to do was I started using what I call these Riker cases. Um, they go by a number of different names. Um, Sanity Swapper um, has a couple uh, YouTube videos talking about the different cases that uh, he uses. Uh, these cases are, I found them at, at uh, different uh, antique malls. Um, they come in different uh, sizes, They're, whether you call them jewelers cases or whatnot. The ones that I have are actually glass, so they tend to uh, clean up pretty good, but the problem is the trans transportation of them. So uh, with uh, some of the, the Boy Scout collectors have gone to uh, plexiglass ones that are a little bit more expensive, but certainly more durable, and you can take them to different events and to be able to show off your collection. In addition to that, um, before I, I go any further, one of the things that you can do is rather than actually taking this to different events, because I remember taking bins of my, my Riker cases 
with my, my patches in them to different events, what I found that you can do is you can take pictures, even if you take off the, the take out the, the glass top layer and just lay it down flat, you can take pictures of your collection and then you can blow it up on eight and a half by 11 printer paper, um, the, the, the photo printer paper, and the pictures come out really nicely. Even if you're, you're doing it from, um, I use my iPhone or prior to that, I used, I think my mom's camera um, to try to take the pictures. And then I printed out on, on a, a laser jet printer and I put them in, in a regular binder and I was able to have all my pictures with me. Um, if you're lucky enough to have a cell phone, um, you can take pictures of your entire collection and put it into one of your photo albums and have it on your phone. And then you can certainly refer back to it if you're at a tradery and you're not sure whether you have that specific issue or if you, you're not sure whether you have that, that actual patch, you can go back and I just flip through my, my iPhone and I'm able to uh, log it and determine whether or not I have it. Now, the only caveat with that is that if you've since updated it, you need to keep that archive of, of photos on your phone up to date. So it's a, a, a constant struggle. One of the, the other things that, that they've recently come out with, and I, I am not sponsored by them, but I will say the Patch Trading Blanket. Uh, it's, it says nickwolfpatchking.com. And uh, Nick came up with a neat idea. Uh, these are our, our mini patch blankets uh, that you can take. And I, I only wish that I had this when I was at the, uh, the Jamborees back in 1997 or even going out to Noax because you can actually unzip each one of the, these. You can unzip the row and be able to put your patches in it. And they actually have different sizes. If you have the, the two piece sets for a lot of order the arrow patches or whatnot, you can put them in here. You can zip it closed. You can lay it down, you know, on the grass when you're patch trading and it's easy to keep it organized and you can quickly roll it up and stuff it in your bag when you're going off to the next event. Lord, I wish we, we, we had these when I was young, uh, but we certainly have them now. And if you want to, they have these grommets on the side that you can hang them up uh, just like I'm displaying the different flags. Um, so that's, that's something to consider. Now, if you want a more secure method and a more permanent method, if we look over here, this is a patch blanket I picked up from a fellow collector and he worked on sewing his patches on it. And if you look, there's a, there's a hole in the middle. And what he did was he, he turned this into a blanket that he was able to put over his head and display all his patches when he was out at campfires in the evening. And that was a really neat idea. He took an old uh, Army GI uh, wool blanket and tur turned it into a really beautiful piece of art. So that's something that, that you can certainly consider. Um, when it comes to collectors, collectors may uh, shy away from this idea because you are uh, quote unquote damaging the patches. However, it's a great way to display it. And again, it gets after my intent, which is keeping scout scouting history alive. And it shows the different events that uh, this scouter attended and different councils he was a part of and whatnot. So I really uh, commend him on doing this. Now moving back, if you want to try to do something a little different. So uh, another idea you can consider is uh, taking all your neckerchief slides and putting them on pegboard. So you take pipe cleaner or you take uh, zip ties or you take a uh, little uh, twine or, or string and you're able to uh, tie onto the pegboard and to be able to put all your neckerchief slides. Now, having said that, the way in which this is framed is it's, it's, it's the pegboard in the back and it's with a uh, regular pine board frame and it works pretty good, but it gets pretty heavy. So my recommendation is to, to keep it relatively small. If, you're, if you look up at some of these other collections, these, this uh, collection is actually of the Ed Knight slides. Ed Knight was a local scouter in the Baltimore Area Council, and he made slides for about 26 years uh, for the council uh, to sell at the, the local trading post, and that's a, a number of the different ones. I really love the, 
the collection that was put together and framed up. But again, these are relatively heavy, so they're things to consider. Uh, as you see over here, uh, I, I also have the, the Riker glass cases. Um, these, I, I learned from Sanity Swapper how to actually frame this up. So it, it took, I did it uh, five by five, so 10 total uh, glass cases go in this. And you could easily switch it uh, to the plexiglass frames. I tried to provide enough room within the frame as a buffer. And the whole entire thing is put together. I have hinges in the middle. And on some of the cases, I actually have um, buckles to, to keep them closed, uh, if you look on the side there. And really, the only thing that isn't glued together is the top. And I will turn it to the back so you can kind of see it. I tried to shim it up uh, a little bit. I would recommend doing some cross members to try to keep it going. But the way in which these are done is they're done with three different, you can do less, two, three, three bolts, but you really just have to uh, get a flathead or Phillips head screwdriver and you unscrew these three bolts and you can pull this top piece apart. It comes right off. Um, you can kind of see it, see how I put it in there. And each one of these can come out so you can easily uh, slide them out and switch them uh, however you want the, the frame to be or whatever you want inside. And in order to switch it fast, again, I'm going to um, defer to my colleague, Sanity Swapper, who has another video uh, that shows you how to put together these. And again, uh, uh, the plastic I got from Hobby Lobby, and all these are are foam boards. Uh, that I cut into the right size to go as inserts into these glass cases so that I can easily switch them out. And then to actually keep the patches on, there's usually enough pressure when you put, uh, you, all I did was take the, um, the boards um, and cut them down to the right size. And then I took a little bit of uh, spray glue and sprayed just the back edge flipped over the felt, which was a little bit larger, and I felted each of these boards. Um, I can send you, I can put a link on the YouTube video that, that uh, shows how these are made and also how Sanity Swapper got these made. Um, I think that they, they were a great investment and it, it was relatively easy overall if you, you um, have a, a skill set with woodworking uh, to be able to build them. If you look at my particular frames, uh, I, I have pinned most of my stuff down. Uh, I use either uh, stainless steel or I believe it's a nickel steel um, uh, little pins uh, to keep in my to keep my patches uh, in place on the boards. Again, with the thickness of this, it'll make it so that the, the pins don't come out the backside and it keeps you safe. But because I'm taking my collection on the road and moving it around from event to event, the patches tend to, to shift. For the ones that I, I haven't pinned down, you can kind of see some of the patches have moved. However, overall, it's a, it's a great method. It's just, again, a little bit heavy. So in order to, to move these frames from event to event, I usually take out the glass cases. I put the glass face-to-face. Uh, -face. So I put both the, the frames together in a box. And then it's only when I, I go to set up these frames at the actual event that I put the, each one of the displays uh, back in to, to make it work. 